this is my first time doing the uh, the engineering for this year's podcast. But anyways, welcome to the Calm Girls. Hi. Today it is just Emily and I, as uh, Danae could not make it, but we are super excited. We have a great show for you today. Uh, we were blessed to be able to go to two different events mm-hmm. in the past couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, the first one, you guys saw our cover art. It said had 11 and it had the Titanic and you're thinking, well, that's an interesting combination. Mm -hmm. It's because we got to go to the Stranger Things experience that is currently here in Los Angeles. It was amazing. And then last, no, right before Thanksgiving, Mm -hmm. we went to the Titanic exhibition that is also here in Los Angeles. Uh, So we're here to talk about it, give you guys all the details on what you should, what you should do, where you should go. Um, I unfortunately don't have my notes about like, prices and stuff so please bear with me uh while we uh while we talk about all this stuff so uh we might be looking at that stuff while we go but anyway what should we talk about which one do you want to talk about first um let's just go and jump into stranger things okay cool so uh basically if for if you haven't seen stranger things you're probably going to be completely lost um but (laughs) thankfully we were allowed able to go to a little a little event that we got to see it before it opened to the public. And it was fantastic. It is now open. It's actually in a little bit that's outside of LA in Woodland Hills. Forgot where it's at exactly, but it's a little bit further out of LA. LA, check. if you guys are from Los Angeles, you know that there's like central LA and then there's everything that's kind of in the outskirts. So you do have to drive a little bit of the way to get there, but I um, also forgot, I'm going to throw up a picture before I, while we go into this. So this is a picture outside. Um, for those of you who are listening, there's a picture of the Stranger Things sign that was right outside the building. So it was not, it was easy to be like, oh, we're not going to miss this. Um, it is in a Montebello. Montebello. It's in Montebello. It's in Montebello. Um, I believe it is in a old Costco, I believe is what I heard. Either way, it's like a mall. Um, and so they have an entire parking lot for that area. I feel like so, I saw that it had like dinosaurs things. So I think it was like an old yeah. maybe like dinosaur play area. Yeah, or it's like it's definitely part of like on the side of a mall or an mm-hmm. old mall. So parking is great for anybody who's in Los Angeles. I think the number one thing everybody gets anxiety about, at least I do specifically, is parking. But you just drive straight up and you see that sign it says Stranger Things experience. You can't really miss it. Very um, easy. It is a ticketed thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just getting away with some of the logistics before we get into our critique of it. Uh, you can currently get them online, but they are, they sell pretty quickly, but you, it's timed events. Overall, the entire experience is about an hour. So they mm-hmm. have a timed experience while you're going through, which we will not have pictures of because you are not able to take pictures through the experience. through the actual experience because they want to give it as a surprise to someone. Okay. Um, we I do have a few um, pictures that were thankfully provided by Netflix that I will show you a little bit later of the actual experience, but we were not allowed phones. Uh, they are very particular. They don't want that to be ruined. And I kind of really respect that. I we're, do, in yeah. a, we're in an age of like, let's take pictures. We don't always get like that, that whole experience if we're submerged into our phones. Yeah. Um, but that experience was about, are we about 45 minutes to an hour? Yeah, it was about an hour. Um, it kind of was like, for those wondering, it's kind of like escape room meets like vr meets like horror nights maze kind of yeah kind of like all those three things kind of mixed into one so you go in there's some like little puzzles you kind of got to solve um there's little tasks you got to get done but not like super like there's always like a way like a linear storyline so you're never fully in one room for too long yeah um but you're at the hawkins lab um, and while you're waiting to go in the Hawkins lab, you are allowed to take some photos, which <laughs> I think I do have a video photo here. Um, for those who are listening, this is Emily, Danae, and I first when we first get in mm-hmm. to the experience. Uh, really excited. Uh, so you're allowed to take pictures in the first area when you're getting loaded into what is called the sleep study. The sleep so this study. photo on the screen is kind of showing you the outside queue area, and they put you into a group. There are three groups. Uh, I want to say about 50 people each or so or 20 people each i can't remember exactly nah, and there wasn't a lot we only had two like we had smaller groups yeah smaller but groups. yeah and so they go here and i don't think i was able to get a video up like put a video on it but like you have these lab scientists or whatnot who are like 
pre-screening you and just improving so well. Uh, Danae was just enjoying it greatly. She was having so much. Fun. Um, so I it was, was nervously laughing. Yeah, the whole she was. Time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of fun. It kind of gets you into this like whole like experience. And yeah, so there's that. And then after that, we couldn't take pictures, like I said, because they wanted to keep it there. But you're going through all the different areas. You go through the Rainbow Room. If you guys have watched Stranger mm -hmm. Things four, you know that there's a Rainbow Room is a big, huge, prominent part of it. So you did get to go in that. Um, there was you were in like the control room mm -hmm. and trying to like lock yourself in there so that the demogorgons didn't get you. Um, but really cool. And then it closes out with. Let me see if I can find these pictures at the end here. Sorry, guys. I try not to do too much talking over everything. Okay. Oh, here we go. So here's one of them. That's the end. Hold on. Wrong one. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um, I don't know if we Oops. actually loaded them in here because we have a lot of pictures for the whole thing. Yeah, those are not. Okay. They're not on here. But they had like a VR type. You had to put glasses on. Um, and 3D glasses. 3D glasses. But it was very, very like more than just 3d because well, it was it definitely was like depth perception big yeah screen too and yeah it was very interactive yeah so that was one of the cool things about it. it's really hard to explain it without you seeing the pictures of it but i'll try to post maybe we can post some more pictures later on for mm -hmm. seeing the ones that netflix posted but then after you get through the experience you get to the star court mall so if any of you guys watch Stranger Things, you know that there's the Starport Mall. And that's the very end of the experience. This is an untimed thing. So for those of you who are listening, you see here, this is a picture that was provided courtesy of Netflix, um, is of the Starport Mall. There's um, a concession stuff. There's there is food, there's shopping, there's, there's photo, booths. photo opportunities, there's drinks, there's yeah. just a little bit of everything in there. A little bit of there. everything. Different so, experiences as well. You have people walking around like the characters and that kind of thing so yeah so it was pretty pretty fun this is the part that is not time to just they don't kick you out unless of course we went at the end of the night so they did eventually kick us out because they were closing but other than that you're allowed to stay there and enjoy yourself um they had a lot of food um we mm -hmm. got pizza they have the argyle's pizza truck they have scoops of hoy so i'm gonna start going through pictures and we can kind of describe them as we're going through them but emily what was like your favorite part about the whole I mean, the whole experience, my favorite part was the very beginning where they're actually like interacting with each of us individually and like really getting inside your head <laughs> and like trying to build up that suspense that they normally do. And it was it was just a lot of fun. I enjoyed watching Danae just really get into it i really enjoy getting into it sometimes myself and <laughs> she just... laughs when she's uncomfortable so it's rather entertaining when she's uncomfortable because <laughs> she laughs about it but top notch the actors like yeah the they actors were having fun they you were can tell that it's a you, you have to be good at improv because you don't know what people are going to say mm -hmm. while they're asking you why you did the sleep study and stuff like that so kind of sets off sets the bar pretty high um so I did show you guys some of those pictures uh, but then once we got, and then my favorite part is like literally the very end when you go through and you're in the upside down, mm -hmm. basically on the upside down and Max is there basically trying to get out, but also not let anything in to our world. And so you see a actor who's playing Eleven mm -hmm. and then they also like project onto her face, which is crazy. <laughs> but, um, and then you, there's some stuff where you... It's it, it it's a little jump scary. I'm not gonna lie. Like a little bit. You kind of have to like that horror nights vibe a little bit because there are some like little jumpy type things that they do. But it was so well done. Like, it high really was. Technology. It was definitely great. that part alone. I think is worth the experience because I've never seen anything like that. Um, that didn't involve like an amusement park where you're sitting down in a ride and it's one scene and then you move on. So it kind of gave me like. I don't want to even say like Muppet Vision vibes because it's more than that. Oh yeah. But it has some of the same similar kind of components. Mm -hmm. um, but then after we got to that scene's done and you save the day, all the crew's there, they save the day. All the crew minus Steve, which we'll talk about that in our critique a little bit. But um, yeah, so let's go through some pictures. Here is, once we went inside, there were photo ops galore. Mm -hmm. Lots this is of us ops. with, of course, a Demogorgon. 
uh, the three con girls. All these pictures uh, you can also see on the con girls Instagram um, or I think the con guy I also posted it there as well. For those of you who are first time listeners, the con guy is our main site, um, which we recently have branched off to doing the con girls as well. Everything is from a female perspective. We talk about um, things from a female perspective, but also topics that women enjoy. And so, you know, horror, why not, right? Yeah. Who doesn't love Stranger Things? I mean, come on. So this is us with the Demogorgon, mm-hmm. having all sorts of fun. Then of course there is the iconic, iconic couch scene mm-hmm. uh, from the buyer's household yep. with, with the lights, which the you can't see, but lights. behind us, behind us right now, you can't, they're a little bit over here. You can see we kind of have that inspired look going on. Yeah. Um, a completely unintentional, <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. Um, and then let's go next. We have, Emily, you want to talk about this one? Um, well, uh, there was a, a phone booth that was up, and I decided to get on it, and then nothing was happening. And so I hung up, and the guy was like, oh, if you stay on the phone booth, a little, like on the phone a little while, a couple minutes, something will happen. And I sat there for a good couple minutes and nothing happened. So I don't really know what happens. But it did but have I'm a sure dial tone. Something. It did have a dial yeah, tone. it did have a dial tone like you were actually calling someone. Which, so I felt like back in the 90s. Yeah, which, you know, <laughs> it, it, it definitely is interesting. I think it's a fun family, definitely family and friendly experience um, for Absolutely. the whole family to enjoy. But there is going to be certain things that are going to be interesting for a younger generation to see, like, what's a dial tone, you know? Like, yeah. That not everybody knows that like unless you were born at that pay time. Phone. What's a payphone? Yeah, exactly. Pay and don't that's... worry. For those of you who are millennials, we definitely pressed the coin, the coin release, and checked to make sure there was no change. In it. <laughs> obviously, obvious you, you for obvious reasons. You can't avoid it, even though they weren't working mm-hmm. payphones. That was just the instinct that we did. Um, and then. Mm-hmm. I think this one is the one we just showed. Oh, this is just a more fun of us in front of the buyer's couch. It's just having fun. Yeah. But, um that one's the one I already said. And then there was like we said Scoops Ahoy. Scoops Ahoy. Um, what was interesting about this particular experience was that Emily and I have did go to the Scoops Ahoy Papa mm-hmm. when it came during season three um at the barn at the Baskin Robbins in Burbank. Mm-hmm. Um and this was kind of the same set kind of same vibe but they did have a lot of delicious offerings. Um, I had the chicken and waffles. You did. I had the actual, I can't remember what. The SS Butterscotch. The SS Butterscotch, the one from the actual show. Yes. And I was really excited to eat that. It was so good. You got to choose your own three different kind of ice creams if you wanted. Then it had cherries and like little waffle pieces in it. It had a decent menu. And they they had a lot of different ice cream fans. Like there's kind of a little bit of everything. Um, At that one we also got. These popcorn buckets. Oh, I need to take the picture down. So sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm new here. All right. We got these cute little popcorn buckets. Yeah. Um, which they're not like plastic, but they're kind of like that coated paper, a little bit thicker. They're not like the tins that AMC has, but you know, they say Fever and they say Netflix. Um, obviously, Fever is how we often go to this. If you guys are familiar, Fever does all sorts of events. They actually did both of the events we're talking about tonight. So. Definitely check them out if you like events. You can find stuff for everything with Fever. So yeah. thank you, Fever, so much for having us and Stranger Things. We can't appreciate that enough. It was wonderful. Um, had so see. much fun. Next one, I think, is another Scoops mm-hmm. of Hoy, just us being silly. Mm-hmm. I think that was the one before. Oh, okay. Oh. Then we have, um, we, there was a photo booth. A photo booth! A traditional old school photo booth, like the ones that my mom would never let me do as a kid. Right. Because we could not afford them. Right. Um, this one we did pay just a little extra money for because, you know, why not? It was it's fun. It's fun. Um, so there is a couple photo booths there. And the last picture is Vecna. You can't see it in this, but it's us being scared because Vecna popped up on the screen. Um, and then, of course, for our adult audiences, there is a bar called the Upside Down. Or I think it's called the Upside Down. Or the Upside Bar or something like that. I don't think it's called the Upside Down. And they have themed drinks. Um, which are always fun. Um, I also have non-alcoholic yes. choices as well. Yes. I don't drink alcohol, so I was able to get a um, really I believe I drink. got a themed margarita because I am a sucker for themed drinks and offerings. Like, can't avoid it. It's just, it's so much fun. Um, so <laughs> there's that. And just, I do want to say one thing is um, they, I, I do believe they take cash and card. Um, but 
make sure you have some cash or at least something on you so you can tip the bartenders and all the lovely little service workers there. They were having fun. They were vibing. You could tell that they were enjoying this like kind of immersive feel. You know, at Scoops Ahoy, they wore the the costumes of the show. So just kind of to be there. Make sure you're good and nice to people. You know, first and foremost, we always want to stress that about any going to any event as they they are trying to provide a service and a fun experience. So treat them well. Yeah. Um, Cause I know we didn't have enough cash, so we weren't able to tip as much as we wanted to. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, that's the next topic. Um, but before we wrap up this, there also was um, cards outside. Yeah. Um, this Thank is you, Hopper's, Barbie. Hopper, no. That is yeah, Hopper's, that's Hopper's yeah. truck. Yes. So they did have, I think, Billy's car outside as well um, as mm -hmm. we were leaving. Um, it is, um, for other little logistical information that you might want to know as it is, a uh, star wagon type bathroom situation before you enter. Recommend but hitting it up before because afterwards it gets crowded. But they're nice. But they're the star bathrooms. wagon like let once. Like they're not like just porta potty. So really there is good that. Stuff. Um, but yeah, like honestly, I think it's like I think tickets range from like thirty nine. Oh, I looked it up. Dollars. Emily's gonna look it up real quick for those of you who are wondering how much is this going to cost. Standard adult fifty four dollars per person. Standard youth is forty one per what day is that person. For? So that's for the weekday. So I think it goes up yeah. a little bit more on the weekends. And VIP adult is 94. VIP youth is 71. Standard group bundle for six, 46 per person. Yeah. And VIP group bundle for 80 per person. And the times are staggered every half hour. Um, I believe they go until about 7 o'clock at night. And then I believe it goes through March. Um, and we'll see if Emily can find that on the information. But you can go to the Stranger Things. The Stranger Things experience I believe there's a dash in there um to get tickets uh we will try to post the bio uh, in our we'll try to post the link in our bio or in the description of this video if you're watching on youtube it looks like it goes to february 19th and weekend prices are going to be much higher yes. standard adults going to be 74 on yes. the weekend and they i believe they even have like stuff on christmas day like it's i think it's open like during the holidays so if you're looking for a good get together during the holidays definitely check it out and like i said there's a little bit of something for everything even though there is alcohol there is other stuff we also did get a couple other things that i think we wanted to share um which and they had a lot of merch so like if you want like some cool clothing whatnot um they sell these shirts everybody is put into a team when you go in and then they give you you can buy a shirt um we she got the one for our team yeah i, got I did one, i got the one for yellow just because i'm a hufflepuff and i couldn't couldn't help it um i'm a gryffindor and i still but got the that's kind one. of a fun little thing you can get <laughs> we also got this little bluetooth speaker it's dusted. it's dusted it's a blue like we didn't know what it was at first and we got home and we're like oh it's a bluetooth speaker it's also a selfie remote and um a, He's so like, cute. And you can connect two of them together to get a wireless stereo and experience. And so, then we were able to get these nice bags. Yeah. So Stranger Things, the experience. And then on the other side has a cool picture from the new season. Yeah. So. But honestly, as far as events go, we've been to, like I said, multiple Stranger Things ones. We didn't get to go to the one in Santa Monica. We did go to the Scoops of Hawaii thing. We have gone to the Horror Nights maze. There was one other thing that we've gone that we've done, I think, for Stranger Things, right? Probably. I anyway, just don't remember it. This was by far the best. It was also like they took kind of like the best pieces of everything. Like from the one that you guys might have gone to last year, um, after the pandemic, the drive into. I think mm. there were parts of it that were similar to that, but it's fun. Have fun, be safe. Um, if you have any information, questions, just check out their website. Um, and thanks again to Fever and uh, Netflix and Stranger Things experience for having us. We Absolutely. had such a blast. It was um, so much fun. So, yeah. That said, before we go into Titanic, we do have one more thing to talk about. We had a busy couple of weeks, y'all, um, going to all the events, um, <laughs> practically checking the internet um, about these different things that we can do and tell you guys about in case you're wondering. Um, oh, sorry, before, one negative thing. There was no Steve Harrington. There was no Steve. We didn't know how to feel about that. I'm upset like, about Steve's it our because favorite. Steve. I wanted to see Steve and I didn't get to see Steve. <laughs> so as lovers of Steve Harrington, that was a little bit of a bummer, but we were able to still have fun. I can forgive them because they did have Dustin. Yes. But Steve. Yeah. But it had whimsy. It was fun. They had the talent do stuff for it. So 
Um, yeah, but by, by the way, sorry, I the talent is code speak for the actors and the people in the show. But if you're in the industry, you call them talent. So I apologize if that's not a term you're familiar with. Um, but yeah, so check it out. Let us know um, if you guys are watching this on. Sorry, that was the dog. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure you send, put a comment on the bottom. Let us know if you went. Let us know if you have any questions, and we'll try to respond to those promptly. If you're watching this on Instagram or Facebook, same thing. Put those comments down there. Make sure you like and subscribe and all that stuff. Um, and of course, you can follow the Con Girls um, for any of anything like this. Like we have, we've been trying to post anytime we go. We post on um, our stories mostly, but we also try to post all this stuff there too. Um, but yeah, let us know and everything like that. Oh, this is Harley. Harley wanted to video bomb. For the dog people, this he's, is Harley. He's my con dog. He's 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 very upset that we're not giving him attention. So you know, we normally film at the computer, and he can't really interrupt as much. But we're filming here in our living room today, so you know, he wants to be is. a part of the party. So. Yeah. So that said, uh, now we are going to talk about the Titanic exhibition. Um, so I don't know if you all caught this, but um, I'm wearing the heart of the ocean. I bought this. I thought Rose tossed it into the ocean in the end. Well, baby, I went down and got it for you. Emily's <laughs> quoting, um, oops. oops, I did it again <laughs> video by Britney Spears. Anyway, but yeah, I bought this. And if Emily's wearing the Stranger Things, I'm wearing the Heart of the Ocean. It's kind of like our way of representing both the things that we went to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I actually found out about the uh, Titanic exhibition before I found out about the Stranger Things one. and wanted to be like, oh, we need to go. This sounds really cool. Um, segue, or important little tidbit. I'm obsessed with the Titanic. She I, is obsessed with it. I have loved. It's like her favorite movie. Yes. She loves Leo. Um, I also did a research project on the Titanic when I was a younger girl um, because I was just in love with everything. And ships are really interesting and they really, really cool. Are. And when they have history involved, it's just something... If you guys haven't been to like a ship and toured a ship, 100% do it. It's, it, it's, it's really definitely cool. fun. You kind of get to learn about the times that it was sailing, all this different stuff. Um, but then I was like, I never got to go to any of the other Titanic stuff that has ever been in Los Angeles. And so I really was like, I want to go to this one. There is ones kind of going all in multiple places right now. Um, there is a uh, Titanic exhibition in Vegas, which I believe we're going to try to go to next year. So we will keep you guys posted if we do that. Um, but this one was in Los Angeles I and big empty, big empty uh, building. Yeah, I um, I think it was probably like a, either an old building or it's a space that's just rented out for whatever it's, it is. Um, but this one also runs for a few months. Um, it opened around the same time, I think like a weekend after Stranger Things or the weekend before Stranger Things. Um, but, <coughs> oh, pardon me all, sorry. Um, but yeah, so you go in and first of all, we don't go to a lot of like exhibitions or museums like with the Congos and the Conga. We do like a lot more of pop culture type things, but this was a really fun way to kind of, kind of get a little bit of both because, you know, we went with their thinking, Oh, we're going to learn about the Titanic and, and a lot of stuff. Emily knew a lot of stuff. She didn't know Danae, same thing, same mm -hmm. thing. And I still learned some stuff. I knew a lot of it, but it was really, it's more of an informational, but also they do show some of the stuff on, from the movies at the end. So you kind of have a little bit of a blend of like everything that we all love. Mm -hmm. um but we went and we had um the vip one where you get a picture which i forgot to take off the wall but um both of us got pictures i, I took them by myself because like i love them but i needed a picture about myself on the titanic and they had a photo op that you could take a picture on the back of the boat well um, danae and i took a prom photo yes. on it so so when and you let's see these are i think mixed up let's see Sorry, guys, let me find the picture. When you first go in, maybe we don't have it. What's this one? Is this it? Yeah, this is it. So if you guys have ever heard about the Titanic exhibition, there is a, oh, see, she's got the real thing. So there's a picture right now of a boarding pass. Uh, Emily is also holding one up for people to see. When you first get in, you get a boarding pass. Um, and it has, it's like your ticket, basically, if you were on the Titanic. And everyone has a name and information about a person who really rode on the Titanic. Mm -hmm. um, and you carry it with you. And then at the very end of the exhibition, you find out if that person survived or if they died. Um, and so it's a really interesting kind of like 
more immersive thing that they can do, um, which is really cool because we think, I think two of us survived. No, two of us died and one of us survived. Um, so it is a really interesting way to kick it off. Let me see if I have the picture of the Titanic mock-up they had. I don't know if it's on here. We might get to it. But um, it's about an hour and a half. So just out the get-go, just some of the logistics. It's about an hour and a half to get I mean, through the just whole thing. depending on how fast of you course. take museums and that kind of yeah. thing. If you want to actually read what is on the thing, it's going to take, gonna about, take an an about an hour Because it took us an hour and a half, and I was thoroughly reading, like, almost everything mm -hmm. that they had. Um, another things to know before you go, just so you kind of know what to expect, because I went in with an open mind. I was like, I just want to see all of it. Um, this one does lean more towards artifacts from White Star Line and other ships like the Olympic that were the sister ships to Titanic. Um, it does not have any of the artifacts that were actually retrieved from the wreckage at the bottom of the ocean. Um, a majority of those ones are in the Vegas expedition that is going on at the Luxor in Las Vegas. There is one thing from the Titanic. Yeah, the bell. Was it the bell or was it? I think it was just like a little like. Oh, yeah, like a nut or a bolt that nut, fell off. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Anyway, <laughs> but most of it is from White Star Line. But it's still interesting because you still learn about, like, what White Star Line used at the time. You got to see their style. You got to learn about White Star Line, which is still massively um, important and helps you kind of paint the picture of it. They also had little scenes set up that kind of showed you the different parts of the ship, what it looked like. Um, there's really fascinating information on every single, like, blurb about the Titanic because they, they do try to tell you, like, okay, this is what, how many people were on this particular thing. And this is how third, second class on this ship was like, um, like first class on this ship was like high, high, but like mm -hmm. the like third class was relatable, related to like second class on another boat. So like everything was a little bit nicer than the mm -hmm. rest of the boats at the time. Um, so if you are a history, a history fan, fan 100% you'll appreciate it. There's so much history in it. There's so much to learn. Um, and they have everything. Another thing to think about with exhibitions is like, is it has like a clear, like breakdown of like which part you're in at a time. And mm -hmm. like, they do a good job at separating it into the different little exhibits, um, which was helpful because you're like, okay, right now we're focusing on what was built and all the stuff about before it launched. And then now we're into its voyage. And then there is a part where like you're quote unquote now on the ship. They make it look mm -hmm. like you're in the ship. Which That's when you really start cool. to see the state rooms, things like that. Um, you kind of see, if you are a fan of the movie, you kind of see like, oh, I can see why this got its um, inspiration. inspiration. So yeah, like it was just, I, I had a, we had a great time. It was really um, interesting. So here is, for those of you who are listening, this is a picture of one of the state rooms, I believe in first class. Um, it was kind of just a, what it would, what they, it has thought to look like or what based off of pictures from the time um, because a lot of stuff with the Titanic was not always photographed in time because it was so trying to get everything done and get it sent out that they didn't necessarily document everything. Um, so those are little information things that you learn. I'm not gonna share a ton of pictures about artifacts because I do think that's something you wanna see. Yeah, you, you wanna you, see you, that I, I want person. you guys to go see it in person. Um, because it, they are artifacts, they are things that deserve to be appreciated in the way that they are meant to be seen. And that is unfortunately not over photographs. I took a lot of photographs of my own, like, my own key, just so I know and can see them. But that's why there's not gonna be a ton of those that we show tonight. Um, this is Emily <laughs> and Danae. We were falling off the boat because um, it was stinking. You know, pretending like the, <laughs> the ship is, you know, it's a, little bit, it's a little bit morbid. But, you know, anyway, that's their... That's their freaking out in the hallways of the Titanic, um, like passageways, right? Passageways. I don't know what they're called. Anyway, that's them. <laughs> Goofing off. Yeah, that's what we do. Best. There's a lot of photo ops, so just be prepared for some of the areas to get a little bottleneck just while people are trying to take pictures because um, as much as like you do want to experience it with as few pictures as possible and video and stuff like that, there are certain things that are nature and 2022 is you're going to stop and take a picture. And so just know that that also holds up the weight a little bit, but I did just and most of patient. it was fine. It like, wasn't bad. It, they had a good pacing, like how many people that they let through for a reservation. And people were around us were very patient and they yeah. understood and they also wanted pictures too. Yeah. And that kind of thing. And it is, but... and uh, before I go further, it is like a ticketed 
ticketed per time type thing, just like the Stranger Things one was. So it's not like most museums where you can kind of just go in, wander around at will, things like that. It's, it is a time thing. That way they can stagger how many people are kind of like in each area at the same time, things like that. I believe they go up until seven o'clock in the evening, but you can have quite a bit of time to go. But just know that if you are going on a weekday, you may if you go at seven, you may not be out till eight thirty. Like it takes some time. Um, we went at like six o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, the next picture we I have is me in front of one of the entrances to. Um, it was the one of the restaurants. I can't remember exactly. It's a I can't remember exactly, but they were pretty, and it just felt like oh, it looks like I'm on the Titanic and. Um, I didn't dress in cosplay. I really wanted to, but I don't have anything of, from that time that I could have worn. So I am wearing the closest thing that I could find that mimics that silhouette of that time, which is a belt to give it that emptier waist look. So um, so, and a long <laughs> dress. So it kind of had that flow. Um, I didn't have a big hat to wear. Well, some girls were like dressed up mm -hmm. like, and dancing like and stuff like that. Like it was interesting, but at the same time, I feel like it is fun to like dress up, but at the same time, I'm like, it is a museum or like a museum esque type thing. So I feel like it's a little bit different than going in cosplay is a little bit different for this than it would normally be. Yeah. So that's my one, my one thing. Um, here is the, this is either one of the white Starline life jackets or the prop one. I don't know which one because I can't see the placard in the picture, but they had both. Um, so this is a picture of one of the light vests. I am a costumer, so you are going to see a lot of costuming pictures just because I couldn't help it. Titanic is the movie that inspired me to become a costume designer. I think it was a prop from the movie. Yeah, there was mistaken. one. There was one. I think the other one said White Star Line on it. So this one probably is the prop one. But Amazing. as a fan of the movie, as a fan of the Titanic, as um, someone who grew up loving this movie, but it is, like I said, the movie that made me want to be a costume designer. So of course you're going to see pictures of the actual costumes because I absolutely just fangirled like crazy over it. Um, the next one, Emily, do you want to talk about this part? So tell, tell people what it is and then what, what it was. Oh, so that is um, the iceberg. Basically, they recreated how cold the ice and the water and stuff would have been after you had taken off the, uh, been, um, what am I trying to say? If you've fallen into the water. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. I've like, fallen into the water when the boat broke in half. And you stick your hand in it like this. And it's a big slab of ice and you try to keep it on as long as you can. And I think I did it for a good like. 15 20 seconds and i yeah. was like nope too cold yeah. and that's what people had to survive and that's what leo had to survive in and he did not survive because rose did not scoot over wow spoiler alert anyway <laughs> sorry, maybe not right now, maybe. so and they did have a little note on the actual information about this is this mimics it <clears throat> it in no way is exactly what it was like it even said that it would have been two degrees at least two degrees colder than what that was so, and it's one thing to put your hand on it, but to be fully submerged in the water, it just kind of puts it into perspective of just like how, how bad it was to be in that situation. Um, then we have uh, Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio's wardrobe from the movie. Uh, Which this is pretty stinging cool. Kate Winslet, Rose's first dress that you see her in when she is boarding the Titanic. I was a little sad they didn't have the hat, but it's her first dress that she wears. Um, it's not my favorite dress, but it still was so like, it's so really to be pretty. able to see these costumes that inspired me to be where I am today in person. It's just, it's, it's hard to explain. Like I was, Emily like moved on was like, I'm going to continue. She knew I was going to need some time. So um, here's a better, closer view of her dress or her suit. Just absolutely beautiful. The detailing, because sometimes when you see film stuff, they do different things with color, they do different things with fabric so that they read on the screen. This is pretty much what it looks like, and it's beautiful. It was gorgeous. Um, and then that's the one from is, the actual. This is the one from the actual like white star line. No, 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 that was the actual prop. That was the. Yeah, other one was the white star line one. The white star line one. Yeah. This one is the prop because um, that was one of the stunt ones, I think yes. they said. Yeah, it was like a stunt one. And there were like six of them, I think they said. Possibly, probably. Um, mm -hmm. And then this here, I believe, is one of the script. Is this script, the script for the movie? Yeah. So this is the end of at the end, the end of the exhibition is where they have all the movie stuff. Um, and then this is a creative picture I took of. 
the passageway doors that were uh, that would lock. It, they would keep them locked so that people could not travel from deck to deck. So third third uh, class could not. Oh, so that was from third class, class right? Well, okay. I guess they had them in between each deck so that people could not freely roam around so in the movie when they're they're not letting people up it's because that's how it was, was supposed to be according to the stuff i read in the actual exhibit so yeah kind of but i had to take it just because it's very like reminds me of the movie and the actual prop replica of the heart of the ocean um so i did take a small class on on exhibitions and and stuff like that and um, one of the things I did learn is that if you are in an exhibition or you are in a museum and it is a replica, they have to state that it is a replica. This one did clearly state that this is a replica of the prop. It's not the original, so but it is one. And like I said, they're selling other replicas. But I mean, the thing is big. Like you think it, it looks big, big on the on the um, movie. It's it's. Like, I mean, look at it. It's like half. And I don't even think this is as big as the one that Probably was on not. display. Like, it's a big thing. Um, and then, that was one of the staterooms. Um, not all of the pictures made it on here just because we have a limited amount of pictures we can put. But I did have the steerage picture, which was of, like, the, um, not, well, steerage. They, they took us into, you got to see, like, uh, third class quarters. You got to see a first class quarters. You got to see a uh, smoking room type mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so you kind of got all the different levels. They also told you a lot about like how much tickets would be now based on how much they were then. Um, all those kind of things that really kind of put into perspective like different times. Like someone, someone when we were walking through was like, wow, it was only $50. And I was like, in 1912. Right. <laughs> I was like, that's going to be <laughs> that's like. That's equivalent to, you know. Like a, I forgot how that much thousand or something. 1500 so, or something. Um, like but that. yeah, just go in with, I want to learn. And you'll definitely enjoy it. Um, I know we did, we had a really good experience and thank you everybody over at the Titanic exhibition here in Los Angeles for, um, having us. We, again, fever. Yes. And again, a fever event as well, um, for having us. Cause we absolutely had a delightful time. Um, this is another thing that, like I said, if you're a history fan and maybe the stranger things is not nearby, which we talked about earlier, it's, it's a good experience because you can kind of see some fun stuff, learn some really cool information and, Maybe you've never, maybe you don't know much about the Titanic. Maybe you just know that she sank on her maiden voyage and that's it. But it tells you all the details, like how many, how many people died, how it could have been prevented, all this different stuff. And at the end, they even tell you some of the numbers, like of people from California who survived. They tell you about the ship that was close enough to hear their call and could have helped save people, but it did not respond. <laughs> All sorts of things like that. Um, it compares, you know, it talks about the Queen Mary, all these different things. Um, so if you get the chance in you know, Los Angeles, uh, check it out. The Titanic exhibition. Emily's going to give you some prices so that you guys kind of know what you can look for. Let me just say, for the weekends, adult is 39 per person. Child is 2730 per person. Senior student or military, 3510 per person. VIP adult, 56 per person. And then VIP plus adult for 74 per person. Yeah. They also had a VR experience, which we didn't get to do. But there is different classes of VIP. One of them is you get a photo, which is what we got. Mm -hmm. And then I, th I don't know what the other one has. I think the other one might have, like, some more merch. They also have merch at the end when you get leave, which is, I get why they have it. I totally understand. Like, you, you want to be like, oh. You had a beach towel. <laughs> like, I, I totally understand, like, having merchandise being like, I went to the Titanic exhibition. But like, I'm a horrible person. I was just kind of like, it yeah. feels a little weird to have merchandise that's like they had a the beach. Titanic, which was a huge tragedy. They had a beach towel with the Titanic on it, guys. So, but like, I get, you know, you they you do the museum is, and the exhibition does still want to make some money, and people want to say that they went to it. But there was just like one of those weird feelings where I was kind of like, is this weird? Like, is this? But they did have stuff from like the movie. Yes. Of course. And that's not weird. Yeah. And, and then Emily got a journal. Like, this one isn't I'm, weird. I'm one of those people who I was like, you guys are going to be walking through this with me, and I'm just going to say, draw me like one of your French girls. And guess what they had? A journal that said, draw me like one of your French girls. So I needed it. Obviously. So, like, things like that, like, I get. It was just, like, <laughs> one of those weird things that I think my brain just goes. No, I get you. It's kind of weird. 
But don't worry, there's, there's stuff that you can have there if you do like to get something. Because I know a lot of people do like to collect things from different experiences that they go to as, like, that's the thing to do. So there are totally some, get like, it. really cute scarves and yeah. stuff that have just, like, the drawing, like, the mm-hmm. blueprint of, like, the Titanic, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. So. But just don't get the beach towel. Yeah, I would, and like I said, <laughs> it's definitely one of the cool, coolest, like, exhibition things that I remember seeing. Just, and it might just be the nostalgia for me, but... Highly recommend it. Um, Thirty nine dollars is not it's terrible, really not especially terrible. for an hour and a half. Like you get a good, you can't go to some other stuff. Or, like I mean, a movie is almost that much money now. Like at some places it is if you're thinking like IMAX. So yeah. um, definitely check that out. Um, or if you guys are in another area and Los Angeles is not doable, there are Titanic exhibitions, like I said, in Vegas. They're all over. Um, the I place. believe. I don't know if the one in London is still there, but I believe there might be one in New York as well. There's a few of them. So just kind of look up the Titanic exhibition or Titanic and you'll find a whole bunch of different options. Um, so I know the one in Vegas has the big, massive, like whatever ton tonnage of um, the hole that they retrieved from the bottom of the ocean. So it looks like it's Los Angeles, New York, Vegas, and Orlando. Yeah. So if you guys are on the East Coast, West Coast, check it out. Let us know in the comments. Like I said, if you guys went to the Los Angeles and what you thought, if you went to the other ones and there's something that was – different about the Los Angeles the Los Angeles one that you were like, oh I went to this one in New York. Comment, let us know. We would love to hear like how they it. how they compare, how they differ. Um and kind of know like like I said, we're gonna try to go to the one in Vegas because it's close enough to us and I wanna see stuff from the actual Titanic. Yeah, me like, too. So much. Awesome. like like but like I said, I'll t- also look up anything that is Titanic related. So uh, that said, thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope this helps give you guys some um, knowledge about some fun events you can do in Los Angeles mm-hmm. if you want to do something over the holidays, all that stuff. Um, and of course, you can find us at the Con Girls on Instagram. Uh, we do not have a website at the moment, but we do have a Facebook for the Con Guys. So follow our um, main site, the Con Guy, for anything related to events in the area, anything related to um, um, pop culture, kind of depends on what we're doing. The Con Guy just did a show um, with about Violent Night, where they talked to the writer. Uh, we'll have some more content for the Con Girls coming up soon. I know we still want to do some more crime content, true crime content. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we know that ladies, we love our true crime. We do. Um, so we kind of like, if you guys have any other ideas of like something that you would like to hear us talk about or think let would be an interesting know. show, let us know. I know we are currently trying to plan a show right now about the best TV Couples. couples um best and worst our favorites our least favorites animated like not animated yeah so you can do that there um my personal instagram is kt underscore christine across all of my social media tiktok instagram twitch everything you can find us there um and also you, if you are not watching this on youtube you can also listen to this podcast on all, any of our podcasts on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We have those up there as well. So check those out. Um, and, yeah, we love to hear any feedback you guys have. And then, Emily, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram. I guess I have a TikTok now. I just don't have not posted anything. I just get a lot of funny dog videos. But it's all at M Gibson Girl. That's me. And then we also have our other our other um, con girl, Danae, who's just going to be with us tonight, but she was in our pictures with us and she got did. to do the experience with us. Joy. Did I take a... We didn't get the picture of us in front of the staircase. Jim didn't put the picture of us in front of the staircase on here. That's okay. We will. Check out our Instagram for that. Put it on our Instagram. <laughs> That's like the biggest one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us, and we will see you next time. Peace. Don't have this ready, so you're welcome. (laughs) Get a look at our faces.